Hello my friends, it is Lionheart here with a new starter tips and tricks video. Now Gwent is a wonderful and welcoming community that puts out a lot of content on Twitch, YouTube and other platforms. But a lot of this content is aimed at existing players. So while you'll see loads of deck guides from myself and many great other content creators, you're going to hear lots of phrases and strategy plans that we brush over quite quickly or we mention in casually. And they're mainly aimed at more intermediate players who've picked up what these things mean over time. Now, in this video, I'll cover some of the commonly used phrases and strategies that the tutorial doesn't cover, but that you're going to hear in Gwent a lot. But before we dive into that first tip, one of the most important things for a new player is resources and how to spend them. Now I cover this and how you should spend them to get the most out of them in my Northern Realms new starter deck guide. I'll put a link in the description down below. But I'm delighted to say that there is now a way to get even more resources in Gwent and that is thanks to today's sponsor, Million Pugs. Now Million Pugs is a reward platform for gamers. Gamers can use the browser extension or website when they shop online with over 600 brands to get reward points that they can redeem for in-game content in their favourite games. And they've just launched a partnership with Gwent, as you can see here. You can get kegs, an amazing shoop leader, and also meteorite powder for those more experienced players through their store. I'm going to drop a link in the description down below for this so that you can find it because Geralt Pug of Rivia wants you to take a look. I'd highly recommend it. You can join the waitlist now if you're not in one of their areas because they are expanding worldwide coming soon. But now, on to the guide. Blue v Red Coin. Well, what does that even mean? Blue Coin simply means that you are playing first into round one Red coin means you are playing second into round one. Now the reason they're called this is because back in beta Gwent, the coin that flipped to decide if you were going first or second was blue or red, depending on if you were going first or second, whichever side it landed on. And you can even see that the coins today hold some element of that. So we are going second, so the eyes here initially are red, but that does change as you play through um, in the current version of the game, so it can be a little bit confusing. Blue coin is often considered to be a disadvantage for the player going first, as they constantly have to consider their tempo at the end of each turn, as if they're behind the opponent in points at the end of their turn. The opponent could pass, forcing you to play another card, putting you multiple cards down, which is not ideal at all. That's not something you want, because this could leave you with less cards going into that decisive final round which is very, very important, as I'll go into a little bit later. Fighting for what we call last say, it's quite important in Gwent. Now, the player on red coin, which I would be in this instance, can also choose to constantly fight to stay ahead and lock the blue coin player into the round, which can be called red coin abuse, smorking, lots of other phrases that you're going to hear to try and force the opponent to lose on even, which means losing the round with the same number of cards as the opponent who won that round. So in order to try and avoid that, you either have to p commit potentially stronger cards than you'd want or play more than you'd like to, or just commit to losing on even, which is almost always bad for you. Now, in order to balance up this potential disadvantage, the blue coin player gets a couple of things. The first thing that the blue coin player gets is a stratagem. Our opponent here would be going first, so they get the stratagem that they have selected for their deck, there are several that you will see throughout the game and you can customize them into your deck as you unlock new ones. The second benefit, as you can see behind me here, I have two mulligans in my first round because I am going second. The blue coin player would actually gain an additional mulligan to help them find the pieces of the puzzle that they need to make things just a little bit easier. This is a simplification of the mechanics though, because some decks genuinely do like to go first. So it is a bit of a generalization, but it's important to understand how Gwent's basics work before you get onto the more intermediate plays. Next, we're gonna look at what is a brick? You're gonna hear that phrase a lot. Oh, I have so many bricks in this deck, you could build a wall, or at least if I built the deck. But what does it mean? Well, it means a card that in your hand is about as useful as a 
you get it, right? And there are a couple of examples of this, and I actually have one in hand here. Roach in your hand is a bricked card. Why? Because I never want to play this card from my hand. Its ability is, whenever I play a gold card, so I could play the Lady of the Lake or any gold card, this would be summoned from my deck. It would give me extra tempo, it would thin through my deck so that later on I'm more likely to find my other cards, which means I always want to mulligan this card. There are other examples of bricks as well, so if I have a tutor card, for example, which is a card that pulls another card from your deck, like Lady of the Lake, she would play an Echo card from my deck. If I had no Echo cards left in my deck, because they were all in my hand, she would be a brick. As it happens, I do. I can right click on my deck and double check. Oh, there it is. There is another Echo card in my deck. So she is fine to hold, provided I'm looking for it. But if I had all of them, I would consider mulliganing away either her, or more likely one of the Echo cards, because she also plays for the value of her own points. Again, a little bit more tempo when you need it. So, mulligans. In each Gwent game, at the end of each round, you're going to draw three more cards. Now, the first thing that should tell you is that in round one, you always want to play down to at very least seven cards, as you're guaranteed to have a full hand into the next round if you do that. Passing before that would guarantee that your opponent could beat you on even, because if I pass with 10 cards in hand, my opponent plays a single card, their hand is going to fill back up again, and they effectively won that round on the same number of cards as me because of the incoming cards into their hand. Your opponent may try to push you and create what we call a tempo pass. This is when they are so far ahead of you in points that they don't think you can catch up, so they take a pass thinking you might have to commit more than one card to get ahead, preventing you being able to push them into that all-important second round, which some decks really don't like. Now, because of the way your draws work, there are key points in Gwent, the seven card point, which I mentioned, but also the four card point in round one as well. Because if I play all the way down to four cards in round one, and then win the round, even if my opponent passed at seven cards, oh no, I've spent three more cards, right? Well, I'm drawing three next round, I'm going to be on 7. Yes, but the opponent's on 10. 10 is the hand limit, so provided I dry pass, or pass without playing a card, going into that third and final round, we're both going to have 10 cards, so it's a little bit less of a disadvantage. Now, you don't always need a full hand of cards in your final round, and I'd go as far as to say quite a lot of decks prefer shorter final rounds, whether that's because their opponent has a better long round than them, or because they focus on more short round strategies, things like point slam cards instead of engines. Now, those are phrases you're also going to hear a lot, and there's a whole nother video series coming with those. Maybe this would be a great time to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on more future helpful tips. Shameless plug. Now, the big thing to aim for, ultimately, is having at very least the same number of cards as your opponent going into that final round, and ideally, you would like to have last say in the round. But what is last say, I hear you say? Well, last say is very important in Gwent, and this is why people fight so hard for round one, because winning round one, provided you haven't committed too many more cards than the opponent, as I explained just before, guarantees you last say. This means you have a final card to play after the opponent has played theirs. Sounds simple, right? But in Gwent, this is incredibly powerful. Because winning round one is important for, very, for various reasons. Because it gives you round control, meaning you can decide if you're going to bleed the opponent or not. Which, is, which can be risky, because you could give away your last say or commit pieces that you don't need to. I'm going to go into bleeding v bleeding in just a second, don't worry. But ultimately, that last say is what's so important a lot of the time, across various archetypes, across various factions. An example of this, you're playing into that final round. You have an engine card on the board, and it is going to finish the round at 8. Which means your opponent's Geralt of Rivia is not going to find value. But if my last card is a point slam, so let's say I had a 10 power card, I'm going to hold that to the very end, because my opponent then won't be able to use their Geralt of Rivia on it. Equally, 
if the opponent had to play their big powerful card, and I had a Geralt of Rivia in hand, I'm going to find value for it that I wouldn't otherwise have found, making that last say super important. There are a million examples of specific last say, and when it's good for that point slam final play, or for removing or resetting or destroying big pieces of your opponent's puzzles. Geralt of Rivia is just a great example for new players because, well, Geralt of Rivia is everywhere, especially when you start Gwent. As promised, bleeding v bleeding. You're gonna hear the phrase bleeding a lot, but it means two things in Gwent, which can be so confusing for a new player. I remember the very first time I started playing Gwent, I was a little confused by it as well. So, firstly, and most simply, bleeding is a keyword in the game, and it's a status. It's some, a status you can apply to an opposing player's card. If a unit has bleeding, it'll be damaged by one at the end of the turn for as many turns as it has bleeding. Nice and simple. But you're gonna hear, I did it myself, I spoke about bleeding the opponent, but I don't actually mean the status ability. Bleeding is also used as a term to describe the action of trying to force your opponent to play important cards earlier than they'd like to in round two. So you win round one and you bleed the opponent of their cards in round two. There are several reasons you would choose to do this, whether that's because they have a specific threat that you can't deal with, you don't have removal or a lock for a specific card or engine, and as a result, you force it out of them in the round that doesn't matter to you. You don't need to win round two, because round three is still there and you won round one, right? Can feel pretty nice. Or simply because you know their longer round is stronger than yours. So you actually just want to shorten the round to a length that suits you because of the way you want to play your deck and because of your deck specific strategy. Now it can be risky if you didn't win on even, your bleed isn't for free because you start that second round with one less card than the opponent. So you have to make sure you have enough points not to give away that all-important last say. If you won the round on even, the bleed effectively becomes free because you're always going to be at the same card level and have the ability to pass. It's one of the reasons you will see people do it so importantly. Learning when to bleed, how to bleed, and why to bleed is more of an intermediate strategy in Gwent, but it's one that you will pick up quite naturally. It's different for every list you're going to play and every list you're going to play against. So don't feel bad if you get that decision making wrong. And it's the kind of thing that will vary and change depending on the situation. But it's important to get the distinction between the two types. So it's at least a little bit less confusing. And lastly, the Gwent UI itself. So this is the Gwent board. Let's familiarize you with it. You have your leader ability down here. Do not accidentally click when you don't intend to. You have got your side of the board here with your two rows, and you have your opponent's side of the board with their two rows. You can click on the crowns, and you will get the row totals for each of them, because that's relevant for certain cards that you're going to play. Not all of them, but for some, it's interesting and useful to know how many points are on your melee row and your range row, making up your total without having to think about it. There is something we call a rope timer that will appear here, in your turn, if you start to run out of turn, you will notice a ticking bar will appear. Each turn in Gwent is 60 seconds long or so. If you rope out and don't play a card before it times out, a random card will discard. So do not do this! Do not do this. But it's important to use as much time as you can when you need to. If you just throw cards in without thinking about it, you're not necessarily going to get the optimum version of your strategy. It's also possible to right-click your own deck at any point to look at the cards that are in there. Remember, they are not in order, but you can still see what's there. You can do the same with your own graveyard and your opponent's graveyard, but obviously not your opponent's deck as, well, that just isn't a thing when open deck lists do not exist in a ladder format. You can right-click any card on the board or in your own hand as well, which is really, really useful. And the reason it's useful is because it's going to tell you in more detail what some of these keywords do. There are keywords everywhere in Gwent, and if you're looking for a good place to find all of them, you can either go into the deck builder and literally search by them, or you can go to the Aratusa Academy website, which will give you a detailed list and explanation for every single keyword. But it is available in game as well on every card. So this card is a deploy card. Trigger this ability when played. Okay, but it also plays an Echo card. What's an Echo card? It explains for you as well, and this is true of every card in Gwent. The card text sometimes can be a little confusing, 
but it's always consistently worded. If you're ever unsure, ask on a YouTube video, drop into the Gwent Discord, ask on Twitch, ask on Gwent's Reddit. Anywhere that Gwent people are, almost exclusively, they are helpful, welcoming, and we love new players. We absolutely love having new players. It's always great to see our community growing. So if you're ever unsure, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Feel free to ask. Ask in the comments down below even if there's something you'd like or if there's something as a new player that's confusing you or used to confuse you that you feel would be a great source of a video going forward. So my friends, that was hints and tips for Gwent the very first one of an ongoing series. I have four more of these specifically planned with a variety of different topics that will hopefully help new players going forward. Now, I'm going to talk about spending your resources again in more detail and a huge thanks to Million Pugs for sponsoring this video. A great place for you to get even more resources. I will talk about the journey completing quests and why I think Premium Journey is fantastic value. I will also talk about in future videos what we call the CCG Triangle which is what are control decks, what are engine decks, what are point slam decks, and how many different variations and other things does Gwent have, and where do they fit, and why does that matter, as well as a bit more detail on keywords, on order abilities versus zeal and deploy abilities, because that can be quite confusing, and then a full set of information on deck building itself, and how to build a deck from scratch effectively. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, Remember, please do drop a like on the video as it helps the channel out so much. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye.